All right, y'all. It's your boy back again. Another video. Matter of fact, let me adjust my camera real quick. There we go. Yo, so back again with another video. And, um, man, I don't know about you, but I'm still feeling pretty good about this win yesterday. I know, you know, next game and all that other stuff. I don't even know who the hell we playing next. Honestly, I need to go see. Um, I think it's like either Chicago or Memphis. I know it's like we're playing like playoff level teams, you know, for the next couple games and everything until uh, All Star break. But uh, man, I gotta tell you, man, that, that win yesterday. I'm sitting there thinking about it, and uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, so I made a lot of points in my video last night, right? But the funny part about everything that I said, I, now check this out. Stan said pretty much everything I said in his post-game interview. Now, for those of you that don't know, I don't look at the post-game interview stuff. Back initially, I would, but I stopped doing that because, one, I want my stuff to not be swayed by... Stan and the other guys opinions so I usually wait a day to go watch or at least wait until after I post but normally what I've been doing especially like the last month or so is I'll wait until the next day I want the game and stuff to marinate my thoughts to marinate think about my video what I've done and then I'll go back and hear from like the coach's standpoint to see how they process um, everything so, with that being said, pretty much all the stuff that I hit on, Stan said, you know, from the point of, you know, how they were defending Zion with Dice and, and Tristan Thompson, from Melly playing, and how, you know, going small ball to match up and to space the floor, you know, all the points that I made and the stuff that I was telling you guys, Stan reiterated that. So y'all know I'm not, you know, bullshitting. Y'all know I'm just keeping it 100 telling you the truth. You know, if I'm telling you the same thing that the coaches are saying too, you know, that adds more consistency to the content that I give you guys or to my breakdown and my analyses of, of the games and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> you know, so even with that being said, you know, I know there's a lot of people who have their um, opinions about certain people's on the team to include Zoe, Brandon Ingram, Zion, Joshua, yada, yada, yada. Um, there's still people that don't like Zoe. Look, man, that'll, there'll be people like that the entire, the entire career. Look at LeBron, man. LeBron is still one of the most hated athletes online, and he's won four titles. You know, they even call him the last one the Mickey Mouse ring, which is kind of like, man, you know, if you go play in the playoffs and you, you win, you win. It is what it is. You you know, you got to beat a team four times. You know, it's not flukish. Um, and you don't get to pick who you match up with, you know. But to that point, you know, there's still a lot of critique on the guys themselves. You know, like one of the things I didn't mention in my video that Stan mentioned, but I agreed with, I just never brought it up is I didn't think that they played bad even when they got down early. I really didn't think they played bad. Like Stan said, they played really good, had really good effort. I agree with him. I agree 100%. I didn't see anything that let me know otherwise. I think <clears throat> it was just it was just tactical basketball at that point where you got to out-coach the other guys and your guys have to go out there and execute game plan properly. Um, you know... To, to his credit, Brad Stevens is considered one of the best young coaches in the league. But when you got old man Stan come out there and he sit there, he's like, look, I'd have been here, I'd have seen this. Like, this is what we're doing. This is how you defend this. And, you know, he had some concerns. He's like, okay, we're giving up a lot of size. I get it. But, you know, sometimes the payoff or sometimes it's a matchup can shift things so much. Going back to the first finals with Golden State, they went playing Iggy at first. Uh, Kerr lucked himself into that. He was like, okay, let me just try Iggy. And that's how they got the depth lineup. And uh, after that, that was their go-to lineup 
for the rest of the time of them being, you know, going on their run, and even up to adding um, KD in place of Harrison Barnes. So, you know, sometimes you got to make an adjustment here or there, and that affects the entire way the game is played. Sometimes, like, we sit there and we look at guys, like I'll give you, I'll use Danny Green or Trevor Ariza, but let's talk about Danny Green because I know he got a lot of flack last year, especially in the playoffs, you know. Sometimes the player is not playing good on the court, but you don't recognize the effect that they have until they're out of the game. Um, I, you know, per, you know, sticking with the Golden State example, I'll give you this one. So Golden State the second time versus Cleveland, they were up three one. There was a lot of things that happened for LeBron and them to make that that comeback because really they, they would have lost. But several things happened. Um, but let's not let's not forget during that series, Steph Curry was hurt. He was playing the, he was playing through the playoffs hurt. Okay, that's number one. But you know, Steph Curry didn't make any excuses. He said, "If I'm here to play, look, judge me by, by my play, not by the merits of my injury." Which that's what you want to hear from your <coughs> superstar level players. You know, hold self accountable. If I show up, if I show up to play, I don't give a damn if I'm hurt or not. I'm trying to play. I'm gonna play, and whatever I put out is what I put out. You know, be, be it good or detrimental. So Steph was hurt. Iggy was hurt. A lot of people don't remember Iggy had back problems during that finals run. Um, like he was getting injections, I think, before the game just so he could play. Like that's how bad it was. Okay, Bogut got hurt. That's what actually ended the Warriors because they didn't have any interior defensive presence. Bogut was actually, you know, defending LeBron and Kyrie's attacks at the basket very well that entire series. That is probably the biggest reason they lost. But you got that, plus you got uh, Draymond Green's injury. I mean, not injury. Him getting taken out of, yeah, he got suspended. He got suspended game five which Bogut got hurt that same game too. So they lost two defensive guys. So they lost that. Bogut wasn't around. Draymond was suspended for the next game. So they lost two defensive interior guys. They lost two straight games. Now you 3-3. Three, three. Uh, Draymond comes back. And you're the game seven. And you got two injured guys of your, your you know, PR net rating lineup, the death lineup, which was far and away better than any other lineup in the league, right? And I, you know, it, it's so much to have to come back from. And you would you would sit there and think Andrew Bogut wasn't that good of a player if you go look at his stats. His effect on the game in the team is tangibly felt. So that's why I tell people sometimes players go beyond the stats. You know, just the ability to make someone alter a shot could have game-changing results. When you don't have that big presence there, and now you got Draymond has to guard like literally LeBron and switch off of him and Kyrie and to some degree Kevin Love, it makes it so much harder when you could just have Bogut in the paint to protect and you could put Draymond and he knows he understands the defensive scheme and what they want to do and he knows how to funnel them in the positions where Bogut is most effective to make the best use of Bogut. See, all of that stuff, chemistry, that stuff comes over time. You built that up, right? Given to that point, that's why Boston, for the most part, is really good. Now, they didn't have Marcus Smart yesterday, and he's averaging lead, team leading six assists, which when I said that, I was like, damn. You know, plus he's shooting really good from three and everything. Plus, he's their best perimeter defender. Look, with Marcus Smart, this could be a different game. This could be a completely different game. But it also could affect how the game would have went from the first three quarters too. So you got to keep that kind of stuff in mind when it comes to these players. But, you know, to, to, to get back on track here for the most part, a lot of these guys get a lot of flack. You know, and I've criticized Zoe, B.I., Zion. Hell, I've criticized pretty much everybody on this team at some point, one point or another. You know, the person I probably critique the least is Steven Adams, and even he has faults. You know what I'm saying? But I've critiqued everybody pretty much who has played a minute on this court, you know, pretty harshly to some degree at some point. But there's a lot of people 
if you go look through it, you might type in one of your favorite players. You know, it could go be anybody. It don't have to. It could be like Obi Toppin, you know, for, for instance, or Dennis Smith Jr. or something. You know, a lot of these guys have people who, who you know, fan them, and they YouTube for them, or they do videos, and they critique everybody else except their guy. So one of the things that I try to make sure I do is I get I look at everybody. When Zoe's bad, I hey I let it know. I let it be known. He's he's causality. He's the cause. You know he has to improve here here here. You know if Zion Zion's transcendent here, but he needs to work on these things. You know I try to be fair about my critique of all the players because you don't want to get so caught up in what they don't do and forget what they do do. <laughs> do do. You know what? To a point, I don't know if you guys saw this, but there's a video that's been making the rounds of there's a, a camp by Cam Newton. And this little kid, this little teenager was sitting there just going in, berating Cam like, you a free agent, you garbage, you ass, all this other stuff. And it's like, bro, first of all, you at this man's camp. Like, disrespect much? Um, you know, that made me question, like, who, what is your household? Like, you know, who raised you like this? Or maybe you're not being raised. Um, but then, like, do you not know who this dude is? Like, did you not see, you know, what Pete Cam has done? And I, and, and, you know, to the Cam point, I know Cam didn't have the best year this year, but let's, I want people to keep this in context. Studies have shown COVID, it takes months of work to get back, um, into that shape. I know someone, matter of fact, one of my exes, um, uh, she just recently got over COVID. And for her to work herself up the back where she was has taken a while. You know what I'm saying? It has, like, it's not just the sickness. This sickness has lingering effects. So people were talking about Cam. Cam was actually pretty good the first couple weeks before he got COVID. After that, the Patriots, you know, so we got, when we assess people, we got to look at people in context. Russell Westbrook came back from COVID to play during the playoffs. I'm telling you, knowing what I've seen from, you know, other athletes and people I know personally with COVID, I would be willing to give him a pass for his performance in a bubble off of the simple fact that the brother just had, was dealing with that. Like, that's nothing easy. Like, what's that guy? Valentinus off of Memphis. He, they trying to get him back in a playing shape. And I think he'd gotten over COVID, but they held him out for another two or three weeks. And I think one of the things he they mentioned was how his conditioning wasn't quite there because of the effects of COVID. You know, but people don't properly assess and analyze these things. We get so wrapped up into the numbers because stats, 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 stats is what you get paid. Post is motherfucking stats. You know, although that mainly came about because of his, uh, Zoe's comments last year, the Bleacher Report, hey, make sure y'all post my stats next year. Hey, they ain't been posting their stats, though. But we're going to get them. They're going to post their stats. We're going to make sure they post their stats. They're going to hear from us until they start posting them. But, you know, it's you got to you gotta look at situation. You got to look at every little bit of detail, man. Sometimes certain things don't pop out at you immediately. You know, the average guy, the average viewer isn't, you know, if you listen to Doris Burke last night, she's going to talk about how good Josh Hart and, Z and Zoe did. Which is true. They defended well. But again, I never heard Doris Burke, Burke the entire time mention Melly. You know, it took Coach Stan, people like me, you know, I'm even on the Pelicans page on Facebook, people were talking about uh, how good Zoe and Zion did. And, I mean, Zion, uh, you know, yeah, Zion and Brandon Ingram too. But Hart and Zoe. And I'm like, look, man. If, if somebody is not going to get out here and actually, you know, assess this stuff properly, give it context, you're going to sit here and have guys not get appreciated, get the value they deserve, you know, which is why guys like me and some of the other YouTubers out here um, are very important, the righteous ones, because there's definitely some non-righteous YouTubers out here. Um, and I'm not saying everybody, some people know basketball, some don't. You know, like I've always said, I'm not going to pretend like I'm a savant in basketball. I am not. But I know a little bit. And every week I'm trying to learn more and more. But, you know, to the point as it is, you know, who is going to prop up Melly and give him props if, 
like I said, I haven't seen anybody else do it on YouTube, so I'm going to go ahead and say if I don't. Right? If I don't go point these things out, and maybe you guys start looking at the tape. I don't know if you guys, you might go look at highlights. You might go look and see a defensive play here, and you might start watching Melly. You'd be like, yo, he was right. Melly straight took that option away on it was like, yo, I didn't even see that during the game. Like, he saw that, you know. And now you sit there and be like, okay, we got to give appreciation to these guys when they step up and they handle business, you know. Critique is fine. Critique is righteous if it's in a good place and it's coming from a place of honesty and truth. But to just sit there and, not, and ignore the good, like even I gave Nall credit for when he came into the game and his aggression, his, him trying to attack the basket, him trying to make something happen, you know, you, I'm just, how do I work this? You guys can be the judge. You guys have seen enough of me. You guys have seen enough of my content. You kind of know how or what to expect from me. I think you guys can fairly assess like, okay, you know, he does try to be fair or give credit where credit is due. A lot of people were beating up on Stan for coaching. And one, and again, I made sure to point it out last night. People talk about Stan don't make adjustments. Stan don't make adjustments. I had to point out the adjustments. Because I don't want the narrative to just be beat up on a guy. You know, last year I wasn't doing this stuff on YouTube. So I didn't get to sit here and pick apart Gentry. I didn't get to sit here and, and defend Gentry in certain aspects you know what I'm saying? I didn't get to give my commentary to aid, you know, or protect him in the places where he needed to be protected, or yet um, put him out there in the places where he needed to be scrutinized. Because for all intents and purposes, you know, I get, I, okay, let's talk about it like this. Stan is a defensive coach. Their defense isn't any better, eh, a little bit, than it was under Gentry, Right? One of the conflicts or one of the things that people talked about was Gentry's defense, right? So if it's bad under two different coaches, right? One who's known for defenses and has had top 10 defenses his entire time in the, in the league, wouldn't it stand a reason that maybe it was a Gentry's fault on defense? And I've even critiqued him for defense. I've critiqued Gentry for defense. Uh, well within reason. But... You know, we got to take a deeper look into this stuff. We can't just be so on our own personal biases or agendas. You know, I've come out here and personally admit, hey, guys, I was completely wrong when I said February 16th, I didn't expect Lonzo to be here. That is what I thought. But, again, I'm okay with being wrong. I put my head and my face out here so you guys can see me and you can look me dead in my face and my eyes and see I'm talking to you. And these are the points I'm trying to make, and I don't mind being wrong, okay? A lot of people sit behind there, keep it in, in, in. And they talk they shit. They won't get out here and say anything or whatever, and they just let it be. Um, You know, so ultimately, man, I just want to be fair. I want fans of basketball to be fair. I want people to understand that, like, these guys – go through a lot as it is, you know, money, you know, having money just opens up a whole new set of problems versus being broke. You know, these guys have issues and problems too, but Hey, when they go out on the court, man, they try to do their best. You know, most of the guys try to do their best. You know, even when I make fun of guys like Bledsoe and stuff, Bledsoe has been really good at attacking the basket. He's made some really impressive layups too. Uh, he's made some really good shots this year. He's been surprisingly good from long range. It's, it's impressed me, but it looks like he's starting to regress now. Um, but, man, you know, I would have never thought he was that good, you know, shooting the ball. You know, but, hell, for instance, speaking of Bled, defensive, you know, all defensive team. But when you go look at Bled, Bled plays some very good defense, but you got to also remember defense is a team thing. <laughs> It's very rare that you meet one guy who can lock down a guy. It's usually a team effort. And the whole, like the Bucks, what he got credit for last year was the scheme. You know, of course, they were on national TV, on, uh, you know, because they're the Bucks and Giannis. But he got credit for funnel them into Giannis and, and Lopez and let them do the, the dirty, the hard, the uh, heavy work, you know, after that. You know, your job is to twist and turn, get them going a direction into the best defenders. And that's why you got Giannis getting DPOI. 
you know, or Brooke Lopez out there who's having a tangible impact on defense because they're putting them in positions to win by using uh, Bledsoe's ability to, you know, attack on the point of attack. You know, the Pelicans don't really do that, you know. And, again, going back to the whole Melly, Zoe, and Hart thing, Zoe and Hart defense was really more effective because of Melly. And truth be told, because Zion and B.I., it was a team effort. You know, I like to give credit to Zoe because Zoe plays excellent defense one-on-one. He's an extremely good team defender, but defense is a, is a team thing. If you don't have that guy to have your back behind you, you can't do your job more effectively. you got to know and trust in your teammates and know that they're going to make the right decisions and cover for you and vice versa. The reason why they played so well yesterday evening is they believe and they trusted the Lakers trio like I've always said and they got Big Z and then Melly came in and he brought peace he he made the game easy for them and they believed and once they believed it was like oh yeah we deserve to be here we deserve we, we're not 24 points worse than you guys we deserve to be right here with you, and y'all are going to feel us and see us. We are not going to lose this game like we lost the other one. And sometimes that's all it takes, man. Sometimes that's all it takes. Now, there could be another game, and Melly come in, and the same effect won't happen. And we'll have to look at it and dissect that game for what it is. And he could be a net negative, you know, like he's been most of the season. But for this one game, for this one game, Nico Melli was the quiet, unsung hero. And we need to make sure we sing the praises of the quiet, unsung heroes. First responders, police, uh, nurses, teachers, uh, even your local people, your neighbors. You know, we need to take time to appreciate our unsung heroes. And for this basketball game, our unsung hero was Nico Melli. Like, oh, no, he didn't just tie in police and all these other stuff. Look, not to be too political, but those guys don't get appreciated. That was the, that was the connotation. Those guys don't get appreciated, you know, as much as they should. Melly wasn't getting appreciated as much as he should, which is why I said there will be no slander on this video. There will be no slander in the comment section of Nico Melly. And thank you guys and anybody who watched for actually abiding by that and respecting this platform uh, to not slander him. And actually, if you didn't, like they say, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Some of you may have disagreed vehemently with what I said, but you respect it what I asked for, and for that, I gotta thank you guys, you know, all the 100 plus people that uh, looked at that video, and still growing, you know, so, I'm glad, you know, I'm gonna tell y'all a little secret, uh, whenever that thing hits 100, I'm like, yes, <laughs> you know, to me, that's like hitting a 1,000, you know, that's my thing, it's like, oh, I got 100 views, yes, you know, but I think I'm starting to figure out what you guys like, so, I'm not going to say I'm going to just stick to one path here, but I think I know how to do my videos a certain way to get more eyes on them. But, um, like I said, man, you know, much love to the Pelicans on that win. I'm glad, you know, much love to Melly for coming in and stepping in big time, playing 17 straight minutes, no breaks, you know, and... I got to tell you, man, like, come in off the bench, ain't played in, like, I don't know when's the last time. It's been, like, a couple weeks since he last played. Come in off the bench, play 17 minutes, played a marathon with so Zion. You playing with basically the four best players on this team ex uh, except Steven Adams. You're playing with the four best players. And you get out there with the four best players who are supremely more talented than you. And you fill in where they need to. And you cover down and you protect them. Like, that's a veteran. That is that is a good team player. And 
like I said, I want to make sure, you know, in context, we talk about Melly, um, judging people, assessing people properly and those things like that, you know, that stuff is important. So that's all I got. You know, I hope y'all have a good day. I hope y'all still loving this victory. On to the next one. Peace.